Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here from Ramp Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I want to show you a little bit of this fan art that I was working on, just having fun with. I wish I would have recorded more of it, but it was kind of the means in which I created it from the different apps and stuff. It was mainly done on the iPad Pro that it wasn't as easy for me to record this one. Uh, I did record the drawing, so I'll probably share, you, share that with you. But I had some people, as I was sharing this on things like Instagram and Twitter and all that, they were asking about the way that I did the inks. And I thought maybe I could just ink this headpiece for you. Uh, so, you know, just her mask. Because they were asking about the little swirly, curly kind of things there. And also, I wanted to make sure to mention to you that I'm going to do the first critique video. So this has been asked for quite some time. And I've really been dodging the bullet on this one. But I figured it's time for me to, to really just do it. Uh, so what's going to happen is there's going to be links in the description box below. I'm going to have you send artwork through my website form on uh, my WordPress site, which is uh, ramstudiocomics.com. Uh, send the artwork there, and I will look at it. I'll pick three different people, and I will do a critique, and I'll do my best to offer constructive criticism in a video. The cutoff date is uh, January 15th, um, 2018, obviously. And uh, I'll, I'll do the best that I can with that. I'm generally not great at critiquing, but I'm trying to get better at it because it's such an integral part for all of us to get better. You know, we could sit there all day long and say, you know, ask the uh, for the admiration of people that care about us. But you really got to get that outside opinion. Uh, and it's not always just artists, just so you know, because I'm kind of guilty of that. Sometimes I think it's better when I get it from artists that are really good or something like that. But you know what? There's some people out there that are art admirers and they have really good eyes. So you, you really got to learn to just take it all in. But we'll talk about that in the video. Okay, so with that, let's start inking. And we're going to... Uh, I'm not going to show the interface here. I'm going to let you know that I'm using uh, Manga Studio or, you know, it's better to just say Clip Studio Paint. I just need to update my, uh, my version on the desktop here. Uh, I'm also using a uh, Wacom Cintiq. Uh, now you can ink just as clean on something like an Intuos. It's going to take more practice probably, but you're you're going to use a different style of line making, I think. In fact, there's probably a lot of ways where a lot of artists doing something like this where it's smooth, they get in the habit of doing this, a quick pass like this. Uh, even with the Cintiq and definitely with the Intuos tablets, it seems to make a big difference. So you kind of practice this quick line making. And, you know, sometimes you've got like, a multiple compound curve so you might do like a little bit of a indent right here you might do the next line and then the next line and you got to get good at kind of lining them up or just going back and correcting it whatever you're most comfortable with but I've seen a lot of artists that get really good at doing one quick pull and getting that line they're looking for and and I'll tell you it does generally help with getting nice smooth lines so you want to practice a variety Something like that and obviously we got to put some line weight on there too so you can correct some things with that and one of the nice things about working digitally is you can turn any brush to a transparent so if you got to go back and clean it up it's not a big deal right it's not like having to pull out the white out so so yeah so I think what people were mainly asking for when they saw this and uh, you know, they were like okay how do you do this particular area the they were saying like the chrome look, and I, I kind of kind of textured this the wrong way actually because this isn't chrome. I don't think her uh, outfit is chromey like, but not in any of the editions. It seems like it's more of a, a uh, maybe a glossy satin or material of some other kind, but not really chrome. But I do tend to do this where it looks kind of chromey and these glares. All I'm really doing here is I'm thinking about the light source and and basically the shadow uh, swirling around okay and I just kind of combine those shapes differently based on that so I might say well I like these little sharp points to a lot of the work that I do so I'll start with a thin line and just kind of taper it off make it get thicker and then I'll start to have it swirl around just because I think it looks cool to, to render that way uh, obviously not looking at anything and, and coming up with this idea other than I did used to study by uh, I had this chrome salad bowl or something and I would sit it in the room and add light to it and I'd, I'd kind of study the the way the shadows swirled around it uh, which is basically just the reflection of the room right so that's that is chrome and that's generally how you're gonna do chrome effects but when it comes to comics I tend to just take 
some of those ideas and, and shift them a bit. And there, this obviously, again, isn't necessarily uh, Chrome, but I think it still looks cool to render it this way. So, you know, it's, it's like one of those things like you're just kind of using style and interpretation and doing whatever you feel might look cool sometimes. At least that's what I do. So I'll try to fill this in and see where I want to take this. And a lot of times if I'm doing the pencils pretty tight, which I think these pencils are a little bit loose, but, but not too bad. They're, they're pretty much there, uh, enough where you can read what's going on. But I will try to always make small changes with the inks, uh, which I think is, is okay because it's my pencils. Like I, I think I'd be really apprehensive to do this over somebody else's pencils, uh, especially if I was using a uh, Crowquill. So those guys are like amazing back in the day where they would actually ink over the, the pencils. Um, but, you know, obviously in these this modern day and age, people just ink over you know, copies or blue line or whatever. You can even blue line right on top of Bristol board. I've seen people do that. I actually did that myself for a little bit because I didn't want to. I didn't want to ruin my precious pencils, so I would like take them to the copy store, have them shift the uh, the copy to a blue, a light blue, kind of like this, and uh, I would ink over that copy. So as long as it was the right blue, it was a non-photo blue, and you could get away with that. But yeah, that was back in the day. Probably showing my age there a little bit. Since everything's so cool and techy these days, you probably don't got to do that. But yeah, so, you know, you see I'm just kind of tapering the lines, trying a little bit of variety there. Uh, and trying to, to keep in mind of a light source and what this might look like uh, as it swirls around. Then I'll add like little, you know, little dots or something. Just something to change it up a bit, make it look like... I like making it look like the, I'm using like a, a pen and the pen's like running out of ink. So sometimes I'll do these lines where it comes down and kind of stutter steps like that, just, just so it looks a little more natural. But obviously, you know, I'm working digitally. I'm a cheater. So yeah, so like the line here, I've got a break here. Now, I could probably look at this and go, well, this should all be filled in. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. And I, in fact, I'm just gonna put a big shadow right here. So it would probably make more sense for that to be filled in in the highlight, this area not having uh, anything on it, but that edging, you see that edging that's kind of uh, visible right there. It makes more sense, especially when you start to pull back from the artwork, you know, because what happens is you do the, if you're too tight all the time, you'll do all these funky edges and then you'll forget about areas like that. Obviously, you can fill it in with the color, but what happens is when you pull back, it doesn't read as well. So you got to think about that. Sometimes some of these tiny little edges and detail work can be a waste of uh, energy, basically. All right, so let's get back to the swirly things. So notice to the size of the brush. I don't know if you can see that. You can see that circle on my screen. I keep the brush larger so that I can get a very tiny line and a very thick line with lots of pressure. Um, that just goes into your settings and how well you figure all that out with your driver of your uh, your particular device. This in this case, I'm using a Cintiq, and it's uh, it's set pretty sensitive uh, because I've gotten to where I can put down a pretty light amount of pressure. So you you really have to figure that out about your own style and your own uh, strength when when doing some uh, what I call finesse work, you know, your your finish work or whatever. Uh, but that's something we're all different on. So every time I get questions on that, I have a really hard time explaining it because I would almost need to be there in your, your studio and, and see your setup and adjust and tweak things that way. Cause that's how I got mine to where it is. Like I had to really, I remember in the very beginning, I had to like sit there and make marks on the screen, go back, change the settings, make marks on the screen, go back, change the settings over and over again. It was it was stressful. Uh, also, I remember it was when I first started doing all this, it was on a PC, and I believe I had to keep restarting my system. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure that's PC drivers are a little bit, uh, especially back then, were a little bit more required to do that, where I think Mac uh, drivers don't work that way. But, you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is. So just be aware of that. Sometimes you've got to, like, test and retest. And it's stressful, it's never that much fun, but 
they are getting better out of the gate. I noticed that with the iPad Pro. I didn't have to do nearly as much to get it ac uh, accurate. Uh, well, I should I should say just for the pencils because the inks themselves are still a little bit uh, less than desirable, except in uh, Clip Studio. But I still had a tough time getting the inks just right in Procreate. So, uh, but you know, give it a few more revisions. I'm sure that won't even exist. Everybody will be doing amazing uh, work out of uh, out of that without all the extra tweaks. Uh, you can obviously select all this and just fill it. I'm a glutton for punishment. I just sit here and draw around everything. I don't know why. It just feels more natural to me. But Okay, so here I just do like a little bit of a tapered line. And I'll probably fill all this in. But a lot of times I like to test things. So you can see I kind of scribbled in that area. And I want to see what it looks like if I just do some, some line work in there. So I'm going to leave that open for now. I'm also going to put a heftier thicker line weight right here and then have it get significantly thinner as it comes down to here. So I've been trying a lot lately to really experiment with line weight. Uh, it just seems to add so much to uh, to your render work and to your, your ink work for a lot, uh, for a very little effort I should say. It's pretty easy to do line weight. So one of the ones that's probably the easiest to grasp is just thick, thin, thick, thin. You know, if you don't really know what choice to make there you can try that but I'll tell you one of the things I think is really neat to do is take a piece of your artwork ink it uh, and then just take a copy of it and then ink it with some really heavy line work just thicken everything up I mean you still want the variation of when you get down to your your um, you can consider it a light source or just a um, uh, comparison or whatever thick to thin comparison you still want some very thin areas you don't want to just go like this it's it's going to take away from the work obviously as you can see there but you want to really beef up the thicker areas and see what you can come up with think of it almost like you're you're trying to caricature the line work itself you know so you want to put these nice hefty even though that's that looks horrible uh, these nice hefty lines and come down to a nice thin line and a nice hefty line and just really play around with it uh, and experiment where you can put the uh, thicker line weight. And actually, I don't want to get into the face too much, but it does a lot for it. Okay, so there's the glare. I had a few more of these little lines here. Again, just kind of playing around with the, the way they come off the, uh, the shapes here. As things kind of swirl around and Shadows kind of bend around the object. Something like that. Okay, so now let's do some of this uh, cross hatching here. And we'll probably just call it good because that's really all I do for that type of effect. So notice I've got some areas that are very thin, very small, uh, very detailed by comparison to the other areas. And then I've got some thicker areas to beef it up, you know, some heavy line weight here and there. Uh, and that's it. And then I would probably take this line back here, if I can get that swoop that I'm looking for, and I'd probably test that being pretty heavy as well. And the, the best way I think to do this is add something thicker, you know, again, make a copy if you're still kind of trying to figure out if it'll work, but then test it from a distance. Uh, some people get really good at leaving their navigator window open. I just, I zoom back and I see if it makes sense. I hit Command Z. Uh, what's neat about Manga Studio is you can hit Command Z a few times and you can hit Command Y to put it back. So I'll kind of play around with a few of the marks that I made and then test them uh, by removing them and bringing them back. So in line weight, you can really check at the end. You can kind of put a once over of everything and then at the very end, put this nice heavy line weight and then check it and you can generally see it pretty well. And the other thing I'll do, and you can't see what I'm adding, I'm adding a layer here. But that's usually how I test some of my crosshatch work. I'll put that in on a separate layer so that I can, and actually I'm going to rotate this down, hold R, rotate it around. And I'm going to use some tapered lines. So I'm going to do thick to thin. And I'm just going to pull these multiple times so that I get a nice uh, heavy line to the start. And then a thinner tapered line 
by the end of it. And my goal is always to try to keep this to look like one consistent line. Like that. And then I might cross hatch it, which, you know, I just tilt it at a slight angle. I generally try to make these lines a little bit different than the uh, initial lines, but that's just preference. And then while I'm here, I'll go ahead and pull this way. Like, I'm basically, the reason why I flipped the artwork, just so you know, I always make a more confident line pulling down on the screen. I think it has something to do with me being left-handed, but I'm not entirely sure. I, I did hear someone mention that. Like, right-handers generally do better pulling across the screen or something, but I always pull better in a downward uh, fashion. And then I'll move this over. I even move it to where <laughs> it's more conducive and uh, uh, mechanically correct, or I don't know how to say it, but where my hand is positioned just right on the um, device. And for me, the, to the right of the screen, gives me more room to position my hand. Now, also, notice that I'm missing the line a little bit right there. Let me zoom up and show you what I'm talking about. You see that? And that's probably not going to mean a lot back here, but... I know that the reason that's happening is because I'm trying to pull too big of a line where I'm at. And actually, let's switch the pencil. Yeah. Uh, so knowing that, I'll go back, Command Z a couple times. I'll zoom out just a little bit more. And so now I know that I can make this motion with just my wrist, where I was, I was still making it with my wrist, but I was actually trying to go too far across. So there's this fine line that you're trying to get <laughs> literally fine line I guess uh, no pun intended but uh that you're trying to get between what you can see and what your hand can achieve uh, effectively you know in a clean fashion so it's it's really weird I think that's why a lot of us artists are hunched over our art tables because we're like trying to see really into the work especially when we couldn't zoom in uh, which I think there's a lot to be said for you know, not zooming in. I'm, I'm really trying more and more as I progress with digital art to not zoom in, but it's uh, it's still a, a tricky one for me because I'm also battling the idea that I'm getting older and my eyes are probably getting worse. But it's, uh, I think there's a lot to be said for just making yourself deal with uh, whatever it is you're doing, even though these lines are coming out horrible. I want to wanna have them meet a little bit better off the edge here. I'm going to go back a little bit more. But yeah, so there's definitely a mixture that you're trying to achieve there and get just right. And if I quit talking, I could probably get a little bit better lines. Silly to say, but it's the truth. See, I'm, I'm purposely trying to skip that line at the end just because it looks a bit more natural, like a bit more organic or like a crow quill or something like that. And, you know, it's, I still don't think that digital ever looks as good as somebody that's, like, really masterful with a crow quill or something like that. But I think that in the next few years, it's going to get there. I really do because people are getting better with brushes and the digital programs are getting better all the time. So I think I think they're going to close the gap. But I got to take my hat off to the people that do, like, fantastic crow quill work. It's just, it's amazing to look at. Um, so yeah, so that's about it. I mean, hopefully that gives you an idea. Now I'll, I'll actually, I'll give you one last tip that I wanted to show you. And I've, I've mentioned this before, but now what I'm going to do is, is show you how I soften up the lines a little bit so they don't look so digital. So there's our cross hatch work. And once we like that, we can just hit uh, command E inside of this particular program and it merges together. But one last thing I'll do with my digital inks is I'll make a copy of the layer itself. And keep in mind, the reason why I'm not showing you the interface, this can be done in any program. So this applies to all of them. Make a copy of the layer, add what's called a Gaussian blur in most programs. Some programs are probably just going to call it a blur, but in this particular one, it's called a Gaussian blur. And play around with the different pixels. This is going to be dependent upon your file size, so I can't tell you what to put here. For my file size, 6 is about there. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to zoom in and show you the difference. So it's, a, it's probably a little bit too blurry, but I do one last thing. I turn down the opacity just a little bit. And all I'm looking to do, really, it's such a subtle thing, and I don't even know if it's that big of a deal. But see how it takes away that kind of overly rigid uh, effect to the lines? And I seem to notice that when it's all said and done, it gives a little bit more of an, um, a natural or just a nice feel to the work. So 
Take it as you will. I don't know if that's something everybody wants to use, but it's there if you need it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to know what you think in the comments section below. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.